Hello ladies and gents, it's EasyScape, and today I would like to share with you one of the luckiest speedruns I have ever seen in a main titled Nintendo game. Only a few weeks ago, on May 12th, 2019, Linkus 7 took 4 minutes off his previous time and achieved a new world record in The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD in the 100% category. But this wasn't just any ordinary speedrun, and this wasn't just a world record. This was the god run. And the odds of getting a run exactly like it are roughly 1% or lower. Let me explain why. In Wind Waker, there are three parts of 100% which require good luck in order to pass through quickly. These are Splish Kaboom, Auction House, and Helmora King. And when you're playing at the skill level that Linkus plays at, getting anything less than decent RNG means being forced to reset. About 30 minutes into the run is the first big reset point, Splish Kaboom, a minigame based on the board game Battleship. And just like real life Battleship, this is also a game of guessing, and is completely random each playthrough, making it by far the heaviest reset part of the run. The rewards needed from this minigame for 100% are the heart piece and two treasure charts, which are earned by winning twice, and also beating the high score of 20. Generally, Linkus will reset if it takes him longer than 2 minutes and 30 seconds to beat it. Otherwise, it will take too much time and cost too many rupees to finish the rest of the run. This actually happened during Linkus's AGDQ 2019 run. He tried the minigame for about 3 minutes, but ran out of rupees and had to come back later. After returning, it took him an additional 5 minutes, including some clever, on the spot, never before seen RNG manipulation. Fits. You're really tall and I'm pretty short, so the 4 and a 2. Yeah. Maybe that's what we needed. Maybe if we just cuddled a bit, we would have found it. Alright, <laughs> let's do this. Oh. 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 Wait. Yeah, no, top, top. One of the top ones. Wait, what? Down. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't get it. Wait. Just try all, all the ones on the outside. You have enough shots. Here? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, Here? That, yeah, what, that one? Left? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most confusing pattern ever. I was like, what is that? So his GDQ run in total took around 8 minutes, but with perfect luck, it can be done in only 1 minute. In the world record run, he lost his first attempt, then won twice in a row, both being scores under 20. On average, winning with only 2 or 3 attempts only happens 10% of the time for him. Oh, yes! Alright, GG. Oof, alright, we got a run going, Chad. Next up is the auction house, where you can place bids for items. The items offered are the heart piece, joy pendant, swift sail, and two treasure charts. But the only item useful for early game is the swift sail, so the auction house is broken up into two trips, with the first trip only getting the swift sail. Since there are 5 items, and every item has an equal chance of appearing, that means there is only a 20% chance to find the swift sale each time you enter the auction house. And every time you don't find it, you lose 45 seconds and are forced to retry. The most attempts it has taken Linkus to get the swift sale in a run is 23 times, but in his world record run, he got it first try, losing no time at all. Hopefully it can be nice, bless RG in the chat, come on! Oh yes! Dude, today is a good day, my friends. Today is a good freaking day. Later in the run, he returns to the auction house for the remaining items, but at this point, money is no longer a concern. This is because Linkus farms rupees in the Savage Labyrinth to buy all of the remainder items in the auction house for 999 rupees each. Since this is a max bid offer for all of the items, he instantly wins each auction, saving around 40 seconds by skipping the bidding process each time. The issue is, there are still 4 items left to buy in the auction house. But for the speedrun, only the heart piece and two treasure charts are needed, not the joy pendant. Which means 4 hours into the run, there are 3 RNG dependent rolls that can lose time including a 75%, 66%, and 50% chance to not encounter a joy pendant respectively, which would otherwise lose 45 seconds each time. In Linkus' run, he got all of the items first try, and never saw a joy pendant at all. Come on, please give me a map up. Please, please don't be a joy pendant, please. Oh my god. The last luck based portion of the run is the Helmara King boss fight. All of the moves that this boss uses come out in a random order, and it's only possible to damage the boss during certain moves. Ideally what a speedrunner would want to happen is for the Helmara King to land and then peck twice. If he pecks and misses, he will get stuck in the ground so that Link can punish. When he's on the ground, he's able to attack up to two times, so a double peck in one turn is the best that you can possibly get. 
but there is no guarantee that the boss even lands right away. He could just fly around and attack from afar before landing. And when he lands, he may either stomp the ground or blow wind towards Link, rather than Peck. It takes 4 hits to beat the Helmrock King, so the most optimal fight would be land, Peck, Peck, and then land, Peck, Peck. Link has shared with me that he's only seen this perfect fight pattern once by Gymnast. The pattern that Link has got was land, Peck, Peck, land, Peck, and then land, Peck. Obviously this wasn't perfect, but it's the best pattern Linkus has ever gotten on this boss fight, and he has only ever encountered this pattern six times. Land. So now we're hoping into land again. Oh! This might be second best pattern RNG. Not bad, dude. Not bad. We're saving a lot of time. That is amazing RNG. So you would think with all the luck involved in this run, and the sheer luck Link has got in this world record, that luck would be the leading reason for someone not wanting to beat the record. But I would argue the difficult tricks and skips alone are an even bigger detriment, as there are only three people in the world that can even consistently perform them for world record contention, which are Linka7, Gymnast86, and Ian Miles 29 If you aren't familiar with all of the speed tech this game has to offer, I actually have Linkus here to give some explanations on some of the more difficult parts. The tricks and glitches start off straight away after getting past the introduction of the game. Right after gaining control of Link, the first glitch comes into the run, and is one of the most difficult tricks in the game. A common occurrence you will see in many speedruns is the use of negative speed. Just like in games like Super Mario 64, Windmaker HD doesn't have a cap for how fast you can go backwards. At the start of the run, I will want to leave Outside Island and access Dragon Roost Island as early as possible. And this can be accomplished by abusing the lack of a backwards momentum cap, with the use of something known as a manual super swim. You see, anytime Link turns around in the water, the game will add 3 units of negative speed, and if Link turns around frame perfectly over and over again, he will continue to gain more and more negative speed, allowing him to actually reach speeds of what we consider a super swim. The problem is, it's not really humanly possible to turn around an analog stick 30 times per second, since being only one frame off will cause you to not gain any speed at all. So this is where the pause buffering comes into play. If you pause the game, you can hold the analog stick in a direction, and then unpause the game, and what you will notice is that Link will turn around in one frame. So with this knowledge in mind, if you pause the game, you hold the direction, you unpause the game and then pause frame perfectly, you will actually just turn around for one frame. And you can then hold the analog stick in the opposite direction and repeat this frame perfectly over and over again, allowing you to gain more and more speed. And this is done for about two minutes. And after some time, Link will be moving at such a distance in one frame that you can do something with the camera. If you frame perfectly tap the camera button, you will go from free camera to target camera. And this is basically a auto camera mode. This is where the game will follow Link automatically no matter how he goes, and it's most likely how you play the game as well. And thanks to the speed we have at this point, he will actually turn around past the camera in only one frame. And what the game will do is it will automatically compensate this by flipping the camera 180 degrees to put him on the screen again. However, this is creating a special state where Link is turning past the camera and then the camera is being flipped and he keeps turning past the camera. And the scenario we're creating right here is actually where you're continuously gaining more and more speed automatically without having to use the pause buffering method. And after reaching enough speed, you then simply go close enough to the beach to get an air refill and then you super swim all the way to Dragon Roost Island. In Dragon Roost Cavern, I'm able to access the boss room without having the boss key. To do this, I use a glitch known as a roll clip, where if you climb up on a wall while Link is partially inside of it, and you roll in the very first frame of climbing up, it allows you to get out of bounds, and you can then leaf over to the loading zone, giving you access to Goma, the boss of Dragon Roost Cavern. The problem with this trick, however, is that every attempt requires magic, and the game doesn't have any magic drops whatsoever in Dragon Roost Cavern itself, which means that if you fail this a couple of times, you will not have enough magic to complete this trick, which unfortunately makes you lose the entire run, because going back for more magic would take multiple minutes. So now, we're gonna get into the biggest sequence break of all of Wind Waker HD. About halfway into the run, you get access to Hyrule for the second time. And there's always in the distance the Ganon's Tower, which is the end of the game, and it is the final part of the game. 
And if you somehow gain access to this part early, it would save significant time in all categories, including 100%. However, there's this giant barrier actually blocking your way to this, but we found a way around that. You see, the barrier is made up of two parts, a damage part and an invisible wall part. The damage part is actually quite easy to get past. All you have to do is you have to enter the damage part, and then when your invisibility frames run out after a few seconds, you have to take out the Wind Waker on the very first frame it runs out. This will cancel the infect entirely by the damage part, and you now have access to walking against the invisible wall. The invisible walls were tricky for a very long time to get past, but we found a way around it. The invisible wall is actually made up of multiple flat walls making a circle, and perfectly in the middle of this bridge, two of them meet up. But unfortunately, or fortunately for us, the developers left a few pixels of a gap in between these two invisible walls. So if you build up a lot of speed with this glitch known as an item slide, and you have a perfect angle, you can actually go right through it, giving you access to the end of the game straight away. Now, this trick is incredibly precise, and the angle necessary for this is only differentiated by one to two pixels on your screen. But if you're able to get this certain amount of speed and this perfect angle, you can go right through the barrier in one frame, and you now have access to Ganon's tower. And this is very useful for the 100% category because it gives us access to late game items such as the mirror shield, fully charged master sword, and the light arrows early on, which is gonna save an enormous amount of time for the rest of the run. After entering the submarine at Headstone Island and obtaining the treasure shirt from it, you wanna get back to Headstone Island. Now you could obviously sail, but there is a trick we can do instead. By doing an item slide into this corner, by gaining a huge amount of speed, you can actually jump in only one frame from the submarine to the island itself. The problem with this, however, is that since you need to cross this distance in one frame, that means that if your angle is slightly off, you will actually miss the island. And that means that you're gonna travel across the ocean for so many coordinates that the game is actually going to crash entirely, losing you minutes. Now, this trick might sound very risky considering how far into the run it is. Fortunately, I've only lost three runs on this trick so far, but it is definitely worth going for because it saves about half a minute. Coming up here is the Earth Temple boss key skip, and this is actually one of the two tricks in the entire run that I failed for about a minute. However, it is still an incredibly difficult run and getting within a minute is still a very respectable time. About three hours into the run, you have to skip the boss key for Earth Temple. For the setup I use in this run, I have to basically place a bomb, I have to backflip, and then ledge grab perfectly in between the wall and the bomb. And because the game never wants you to enter an object, the bomb will be pushing you away. But that means that if I go towards the bomb, I will actually be partially pushed inside of the wall. I could then use the trick we talked about earlier known as a roll clip by climbing up and rolling on the very first frame. The problem with this is that the timing for the bomb and the timing for this roll clip is frame perfect, and every attempt uses magic like I stated earlier with these tricks. So because of that, it is a very difficult run, it requires a lot of very fast inputs since otherwise the bomb will explode and push me down. But if you're able to do that, you will actually get put out of bounds, and you can then start leaf pumping your way to the loading zone. Leaf pumping is a mechanic that we use throughout this entire run, and the idea of it is that while leafing, you press the A button to cancel it to remove it, and then pressing the leaf button one frame later to take it out again. By doing this, you will actually be able to maintain your height for a better distance, but in return it will be using more magic from your magic meter. So it is definitely a risky play because if you happen to miss one of them by being too early, you will fall down and you will have to lose a lot of time to get your magic back but this is the only way around it for this setup that was used in this run. Next up is Savage. Normally to go through Savage, you have to defeat a set amount of enemies, and when all of them are defeated, you're granted access to the next floor. In Savage, there's a total of 50 floors. You have to reach the 30th floor to get the Triforce piece, and then the 50th floor to get the Hero Charm, which is an item that is required for the 100% definition. Now, we can actually skip all of these floors with the use of item sliding. The problem is that the speed necessary for this is incredibly precise, and this item slide never starts from the exact spot. 
So every attempt, you have to hold the perfect angle downwards, and you also have to adjust both your C stick and your analog stick angle very so slightly left and right to perfectly hit the center of this firing to hit the loading zone. And this is easily the hardest part of the run because you have to perform this a total of 50 times in a row, and it is very easy to lose multiple minutes on this. And on top of all of that, once you reach floor 30 to get the Traffer's piece, I have to farm rupees. The 100% category requires a lot of rupees throughout the entire run, one of which is for the auction that's going to come up right after this. So by obtaining these rupees, I need to item slide into one of the elephant statues, and then perfectly time my hookshot within a 2 frame window. I can then stay under the statue, and what I can do from here is that I can actually hookshot the torch on the other side. The game will actually crush Link, making me void out, because on my way to reaching the torch, I actually hit the elephant with Link's head, and this will completely reload the room. And the benefit of this is that every single time this room is loaded, there is 3 pots with 100 rupees each, maxing out to 300 rupees. So by voiding out, which is normally not possible here, it allows me to get 300 rupees over and over again. And I have to do this about 12 to 14 times in a row, depending on my rupee count, to reach the necessary amount of rupees. And for the last two hours of the run, there is a lot of small time optimizations, including some smaller island hops, which can lose me 30 seconds anytime I fail them, as well as several super swims. Super swims are fairly consistent with enough practice, but it can still very easily mess up, since there's multiple part of that trick that can go wrong. And in my war record run, there were a total of 66 super swims, and we didn't mess up a single one of them throughout the entire run. If you want a reference point to how low of a chance it is of getting this run for the video, with the newer route I had 33 days and 8 hours of playtime, and another 400 hours into 100% over other older routes that are now obsolete. I've never seen or had a perfect Spoosh Kaboom, Auction, and Helmrock in the same run, and then to top all of that off, it's a really good run in general with very minor mistakes, was definitely a run I did not see coming, which makes this even more mind blowing. Alright everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, as it's the best way to show support. Huge thanks to Linkus for all of the help with this video, and even volunteering to commentate. Make sure you guys go follow him on his Twitch and subscribe to his YouTube channel, as he plans to post more edited speedrunning content himself. I know a few of the people watching are going to be annoyed about the video's length, but I think it's important to give as much information as possible, and to represent the speedruns and all the community effort that goes into them as well as I possibly can. And that is always how I will choose to make videos on this channel. Anyways guys, I think I've held you for enough time. Subscribe for more speedrunning related content, and as always, I hope you all have a beautiful life. I was thinking maybe you should come with me. Come with me. Just play your song and I'll accompany. Company. Always know the greatest things in life are free. So I invested my money in your company. Like where you wanna go, girl, I'll take you there. Let me put another flower in your